Hello once again, everybody. I'm Jim Noble, joined by Wofford head football coach Josh Conklin, and this is the Coach Josh Conklin Show brought to you by RJ Rockers. Don't let my background um, confuse you. At the end of the game on Saturday, we hit a monsoon <laughs> that we haven't seen in Spartanburg in quite some time, and uh, Coach, we were trying to get over there to do post-game remarks. I know it got crazy at the end, but... That was a heck of a football game, a college football game. I I, I know the, the the final score doesn't go our way sometimes, and it's easy to dwell in in what the final numbers say. But I thought Wofford was competitive. I give VMI a ton of credit and, and Coach Wackenheim that they, they may be a team of destiny this year. Who knows? The 37-31 final kind of tells us how back and forth that was. What once you had some time to let things simmer. What was your overall take on Saturday at the effort by the Terriers? Well, I thought, you know, I, I was really, really proud of the guys' fight, you know, obviously till the very end um, of that game um, to come back after they had gone up six points. We score a touchdown um, really shortly after that. You know, you think, man, this is going to be our day. We're going to get over the hump. It's going to be good to finish one of these. You know, and then our defense goes back out there and, and just can't just can't get off the field, you know. And so uh, I thought, though, that, you know, you're, you're exactly right. It was a heck of a football game um, that, you know, BMI executed how you thought they would. They made they made big plays in big situations, which they have done all year long. We knew we were going to have to make those plays when they counted. They made them and we didn't, you know, and that and that was the difference in the in the football game. Um the quarterback that stepped in for Reese, I thought he he ran their offense very efficiently. Uh, they knew kind of what they wanted to do. And, you know, again, they made some big-time third-down conversions. They made a big-time catch down there um, in the end zone on a corner route that was a heck of a catch and a heck of a throw. Uh, not, not having guys in position, just they made plays and we didn't. You know, it's funny. As you prepared the, for, the, for the game, we, we all kind of had an inkling – that Reese Udinsky might not play. Uh, we saw the end of the game the week before at Sanford. Did it affect your prep at all, not knowing much about their backup, Seth Morgan? Did you prepare more for the VMI offense overall rather than just individual players because they lost their running back as well, Bridie? So how did that affect anything, if anything, during the week of preparation? You know, it didn't, it didn't affect a whole lot. I mean, we had – we were going to really just – we were trying to defend their offense and – you know, you knew they may do some different things or, or try to do some maybe maybe focus on some more things than they, they would uh, with Reese. So you were kind of guessing at that. And, you know, we thought we may see a little bit more quarterback run game, uh, which we didn't. But, I, you know, again, they didn't want to get him hurt, too. I don't know if they had a third guy that was ready to go. So, you know, they, they ran their offense and, and he executed the offense. And I think I thought they did a really nice job of, of making – you know, giving him things that he could complete and he could throw and that he was comfortable with. Uh, we did a pretty decent job of shutting down the run and making them one-dimensional, which we didn't do the year before. And we knew we were going to have to lean on our, our secondary a little bit to make some plays. I thought we got better pressure at times. But, you know, at the end of the day, we got to, <clears throat> we got to make plays in the back end when it counts. And, and, and like I said, they did and we didn't. Well, I will say this. It was apparent that Wofford was ready to play from the get-go on Saturday, as we look at the first half highlights, you'll see the Wofford offense pretty much clicking on all cylinders, holding the football for a huge time in the first half. But it all began on the opening kickoff. With us here on ESPN Plus, and we're underway here in Spartanburg. Luther is going to back up into his end zone and bring it out from a couple of yards deep. He's across the 20, 30. TJ Luther has a step. Can he go all the way? He doesn't have the angle, or does he? 20, 10, 5 gets a block. Touchdown, Terriers on the opening kickoff. TJ Luther the right, and he threw a ball on the money. 10 yard gain and a first down, and now up the middle and breaking loose. That's a big, quick hitter from Rashad Raymond. Morgan takes the shotgun snap, rolls out to his left on second down, looking deep, and he will be sacked. No time, and there's the other half of that. Becklett back to throw. Looking over the middle deep, and he's got Harris, who takes a big hit but holds on for the first down. A 19-yard gain on third and 17-4. Raymond is in motion 
Quick hitter. Slanted. Harris can't hold on to it. And the Terriers hold on fourth down and 10 from their own 26. And Wyatt gives inside. And a nice burst up the middle. Ryan Lovelace. Oh, if he had just kept his feet, he had a lot more green grass in front of him. But it's TJ Luther with the touchdown. He's on the field formation. Wyrick dumps it over the middle. And that's complete. Pass to Garrison Moore. Wyrick sends the Moore, excuse me, Keandre Sanders in motion. Give us to Nathan Walker, and he's got the first down. Tough inside running is what Nathan Walker is known for. Smith, first team all SOCON preseason. Handoff around the end, and with room to run, that Broussard taking it deep, deep into VMI territory. They mark him down at the 15. Yeah, watch Parker here. Wyrick looking for him. Parker has it. Knocked down. He is going to have a first down, I believe, by about a yard. As they give him forward progress down to about the eight-yard field goal. So kick it out of the hole to Parker. That one is up, and it is good. So Walker Gleormis. Morgan looking to throw. Blitz coming. They picked it up, and that's going to be complete. Coming back to make the catch for leading VMI 10-0. Morgan back to throw, looking long and left, and that is going to be complete inside the 20. Knocked out of bounds inside the 15. Michael Jackson makes the long reception for VMI. Near his first touchdown drive as a key dead. Gives it to Swinehart, and he is going to lope into the end zone for a VMI touchdown. Grant Swinehart will give it to their most valuable player on defense. Another handoff for Wofford, putting his foot on the ground and cutting up field, and that'll be a first down for the Terry. Shotgun, one running back to his left, and Wyrick's back to throw. Right side, that's going to be complete. Coming back and making a nice snag is Kayo. Wofford goes to the top of the formation. Wyrick hands off inside and trying to stretch for the yardage. I think he's right at the marker. Is that Broussard? It was Broussard. They do it. Wyrick is under center. Made a motion to Van Cleave. And there's your quarterback plunge. And there's your first down. Ten Henson, you get a promotion and a little something extra in your paycheck. At least some points here after a really nice drive. Making the reverses. Lovelace. Can he outrun the defense? Turns the corner. Ten. First down Lovelace inside the, the five. Carry. That was Locked all Ryan Lovelace. Mulligan into the end zone. Number Touchdown, Terriers. Urban Mulligan, Terriers, Urban 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 Mulligan from a yard and a half out. That's all about the offensive line doing their job right there, putting a surge uh, in and, and knocking VMI either to the ground or back into the end zone. Walker, a reverse. Here's the Morier Van Cleave. Trying to make a move. It steps out of bounds. It'll be a good gainer close to a first down. Wyrick, one step drop, and then throws to Parker. He's got another first down, down close to the 30, to the 32-yard line. Wyrick is going to go back and throw. He's got pressure, gets out of it, rolls to his right, and finally he will be sacked. Second and six for VMI. There's Morgan looking over the middle. That's complete, a good gainer into Wofford territory, and there's that man, Harris, again. What a big target. Morgan is back to pass. He's got time. Now he'll roll out. Short one, complete to Harris. He steps out of bounds. He's got the first down at the 19-yard line. Right hash mark, swirling wind. That one's up in the breeze. And it is no good. Off to the left. So Offer dodges one here as time expires. All right, Coach, so you go into the locker room up 17-7. to seven. The offense had kept the ball away from VMI, which was a huge key. You got a great a great lift from TJ on the opening kickoff, and you had to be feeling pretty good about yourselves at that point. Yeah, I was, you know, going into the going into the game and, and the things that we had worked on, we'd spend a lot more time on the on the special teams aspect of it. We thought we could take advantage of the return game. We wanted to get TJ and Van Cleve a couple shots to return them. And so to start off the game like that was was really great. I mean, it was it was a great way to to go. And then I thought, like you said, I thought the offense came out. They were moving the football. Uh, we scored when we needed to. Um, we really gave ourselves a good a put ourselves in a great position going in at halftime, knowing that they could score, you know, they could score quick. Um, but we, we were playing pretty good football. We were playing pretty good on defense. We were playing pretty good on offense. And, you know, we just got to figure out a way to come out in the, the third quarter and finish. All right. So a 10 point Wofford lead at halftime. When we come back a wild second half of football, that's coming up next. 
here on the Coach Josh Conklin Show. The underdog, the long shot, the nobody from nowhere, never going to happen in your dreams, kid. 100 to one shot. We know something about that. We're with you every step of the way. And welcome back to the Coach Josh Conklin Show, sponsored by RJ Rockers. I'm Jim Noble and Coach You've said it a couple of times this year. The third quarter has been a hard thing to kind of put your finger on for Wofford, both offensively and defensively. It it sort of begins when the offense has a couple of three and outs, and and, and that puts the defense in some tough positions. Over the season, we've seen the defense have some short fields. It wasn't so much short fields as just not being able to crank out first downs, and the VMI offense did get back on track in the third quarter. Yeah, no, they did. Um, you know, I, I wish I could, I wish I had the answer to that third quarter. I don't know. You know, it's not, it's not adjustments. It's not things. They're not doing anything differently. It's, it really just comes down to us being able to maintain our, our edge and our level uh, of, of the standard, you know, and like you said, I mean, I think the week before against Sanford, we had three, three and outs mm -hmm. uh, this week, we had two, three and outs, and then we got a drive and we're able to go down and, and score, um, you know, but they returned the big one at, at, at the end, at the, beginning of the second half down the 25 yard line our defense stepped up we went four and out stopped them got the ball back and you know right then if you can take that ball down and go score uh the momentum shifts in a big way and, and things are things look different you know but you know we've got to be able to get one or two of those drives and get a field goal get get a touchdown off a, a couple drives there early in the third quarter um and then we just you know we can't get our feet settled until really the the fourth quarter well, as you're about to see as we go to the second half highlights, this may be one of those cliche games. Whoever has the ball last is probably going to wind up with a win. Let's go to the second half highlights from Saturday. Atkins puts the toe into it. The 35 gets it up in that breeze, and Knox will have a chance to field it from his own 10. Across the 25, he's got a seam. Chance Knox is across midfield. 40, 30. Keeps his feet all the way down inside the 20-yard line. Oh, on third and one, wasting no time. Raymond inside, drug down from behind. Did he fall forward enough to get the first down? No, nah, he didn't get it. This is Wofford ball. Well, they've had a couple. Third and long now, and Weirich's going to pitch it out right. And that's Lovelace, who doesn't have a whole lot of room, and VMI is going to force a Wofford punt. To you all tied up at seven. Morgan filling in for Udinsky. He's back to pass, looking left. Long down the sideline, and that is complete. Jackson has it. He's all the way down to the 40-yard line of Wofford. And on third and about five, he's looking to throw. Blitz is coming. Steps up, gets out of it, and he'll run for the first down and a bunch more. Takes a shot, loses the ball. He was down by contact before that ball came out, I believe. And Raymond to his left on first down. Looking into the corner for Harris. Ball's up, and it is complete in a VMI touchdown as Harris used every inch of that six foot four frame. Six four usually wins out up top as Rice adds the extra point. Oh, oh he, he missed, missed it. it. Wow. Beth Morgan. Takes the snap, and he is back to throw. Looking over the middle, there's Harris again. Makes the catch and sits down in the middle of that coverage. That's a nice security blanket to have. Morgan's back to throw again. Look to the left. Now he's going to pull it down and run and make up some huge yardage across midfield. Slides down inside Wofford territory at the 34-yard line. Seth Morgan is doing it with his arm and his legs. Donovan in. Harris is out there to the left. Morgan's looking to the right now down the middle, and that is going to be a touchdown to Chance Knox. And the handoff is to Mulligan, who sweeps left. He's got the first down, bumped out of bounds, top of the formation for Wofford. They'll run to the left the other way, and Mulligan almost broke that one, just tripped up as he gets near the 35-yard line. It can wear on you. Quick snap. Wyrick gives it. Mulligan again, 30, 25, thrown down across the 20-yard line, and Wofford is in the red zone, first down Terriers.
At quarterback, takes the shotgun snap, gives it to Nathan Walker. He stops and rolls forward, still running, still churning the legs. Walker, oh my goodness, what a touchdown run. Touchdown Terriers. There's touchdowns, and then there's grown men touchdown. That was a grown man touchdown right there by Nathan Walker. Take another look at big number 21. Drags the entire core of cadets across the goal line, and the Terriers are up 23-20. to 20. Morgan is back to pass yet again. That one's long left side, and almost, oh my oh goodness, my it's caught. Almost intercepted, that it bounced right to Jacob Harris, and he is down at the 15. A couple of deflections and then a catch. Jaheim Hazel had a shot at it. It bounced behind him. How about the quick hands by Harris? The spring football top 10 for you. Raymond, the fake to him, the throw to Harris, and he is into the end zone for the VMI touchdown. We have three wide receivers, but they're going to hand it off to Swinehart. He will try to use up some time, get inside the 20 to the 18. Ball's on the right hash. That ball is up. And that is good. A clutch kick by Jerry Rice. VMI with a 30 to 24 lead. Wyrick back to pass. They pick up the blitz. Complete. Parker. Can he outrun the defense? 40, 30. Landon Parker is going to go all the way for the Terrier touchdown. What a play. And no there flags. are. <laughs> we had to look. No flags on the play. Now it's up to the redshirt freshman. He is back to throw. Up the seam, it's complete. Morgan to Harris. First down into Wofford territory. Now at the 34-yard line. Wofford defense has to make a play here. Morgan deep and a collision and a flag. <laughs> I don't know if that was just, an, again, it's Harris again, double coverage again. Morgan drops into the end zone. Wide open, Harris, touchdown, VMI. They had him one-on-one -on -one in the linebacker, and that is a mismatch. Knox in motion, stops, Morgan throws left, and that's incomplete. That's his first bad throw of the day. One running back to his right. Drops straight back. VMI comes on the blitz. And Wyrick flips it out to Lovelace, avoids the sack. Lovelace weaving for some room, didn't get out of bounds. Out to the 41 yard line. Wyrick takes the snap. Short pass. Complete. They got to get out of bounds or this game is over. McVan Cleave is tackled on the 35 yard line, and that is it. VMI goes to 5-0 and oh on the season. They outlast Wofford 36-31. to 31. Well, as you see, it just, just did not bounce Wofford's way. The final 36-31, to 31, VMI takes it. And, and I'll tell you, I know a lot of fans are harping on, uh, on that streak of penalties. I went back and looked at him, coach, and you you and the players are never going to be one to, to blame the officials. You never have. You never will. Um, certainly the, the roughing the passer call when you think you're off the field uh, hurts. Certainly some of the interference calls. When you can kind of throw the ball up in the air and, and it's a 50-50 ball, you know, we see that a lot in college football. It was just one of those days where any one of those calls might have made the difference and it just didn't happen. Right. Right. No, it did. And I, I think the challenge for us is, you know, we're not going to blame the officials. They have a job to do, like you said. So, you know, the challenge for us is how can we coach it better? How can we put our guys in better positions? So um, there is no doubt, you know, and there's no, you know, I know the defensive guys get pushed off of and the, and the offensive guys are getting, you know, pushed off of. And a lot of times it's a bang, bang play. Um, you know, again, I, I, you know, I think all those are, or judgmental calls, right? I mean, that's what they are, and, and it didn't go our way. The one deep ball they threw, we had a guy in position where he could have probably picked it. It goes through his hands, bounces up, and the VMI guy catches it. I mean, just it was just one of those days where you're like, man, what's you know, we must not be the football gods aren't looking at out for us right now. But um, 
you know, we got to clean it up and we got to do a better job coaching and, and uh, we won't use that as an excuse because we had plenty of opportunities. Well, there were a couple of individual efforts that I want to I point out. First of all, Nathan Walker, that touchdown run where he carried about five defenders into the end zone, that's something that you can use, I think, to, to show guys what individual toughness and, and, and what Wofford football is all about, I imagine. Yeah, that will be the that, that, that to me is the staple right now for our young guys, especially guys that haven't been here, guys that haven't been part of the program, guys that have not won the games to watch how he ran the football during the entirety of that game. But then at that at that moment when we needed a touchdown and he just he willed himself to do it um, hard, gutsy run. Um, and it's something that will definitely show our guys because it just it embodies you know who we want to be at every position. Um, we've got, like I said, we've got some young guys out there playing right now that are trying to kind of find themselves and find their way. And, you know, you've got to have that type of attitude, though, and that type of mentality. And then Landon Parker, less than two minutes to go, takes a little slant from Jimmy Wyrick and turns on the Jets. You told us he was an athlete when you told him, told us that you were moving him to punter. But we didn't know Landon had speed like that to outrun one of the best defensive backs in the entire conference you have another weapon out there now at tight end or even when he's on the field in different positions, don't you? Yeah, we do. I, I think that's, you know, for me right now, when you look at his play, I think Landon's had two really good, the past two weeks, he, he's, he's, he's a problem. You have to know where he's at. You gotta, you've got a game plan for him just like I think you do against TJ at times. So, you know, I think for us offensively right now, we're doing a great job of running the football. Um, we, we're finding ways to run the football. We've got a lot of answers there. The challenge right now is how can we, how can we utilize those type of guys? Um, you know, we got guys on the, on the bench right now that I think are, you know, Keandre Sanders, Alec Holt, um, Demaria Van Cleve didn't get a ton of touches. Although the one that he missed that we missed um, Jimmy overthrew him, that could have been a touchdown. We've got guys like that. We got, we just got to be able to get them the ball like Landon did there. And if you do, and you're not just exactly right, they have the potential to hurt you. Well, when we come back, it's time to look ahead on a number of fronts. Of course, the Citadel comes to town. They have been struggling. We'll take a look at that matchup and also Wofford football camps. Of course, there's no rest for the weary. As soon as this season is over, coach Conklin and his staff, not only recruiting, not only planning for the fall, but also taking a look at some uh, high school youngsters as well. All that coming up next as the Coach Josh Conklin Show continues. And welcome back. The Citadel coming to Gibbs Stadium this coming Saturday. Uh, coach, they are they are struggling. They have had mm, off the field issues. They have had on the field issues. They are uh, kind of an epitome about the what going through this spring football season is all about. I believe they've lost nine games in a row coming back going back to last fall which in my mind probably makes the Citadel a dangerous team. They want to win. We want to win. Something's got to give on Saturday. Yeah, no, it'll be, I mean, you know, it's going to be a great game. It's a rivalry game. Um, they always play us really well. They play us tough. They know how to defend our offense. Uh, we know, you know, we have an idea how to defend their deep, their offense. Um, it's a slug fest. There's not a lot of possessions out there usually. Um, so you've got to make every possession count. Uh, but they're going to come in here and, you know, uh, beside the turnovers, you know, that they've been struggling with, I mean, they're moving the ball effectively. Uh, the option is always going to present its issues because you've got to be right. Um, you just can't go out there and, and execute however you want to do it. So we've got, you know, to me, the biggest concern right now, Jim, we got some young guys on defense that are going to have to play against this stuff for maybe the first time and how quickly can they adapt to it and adjust to it will be, will be a big deal. Um, so we're going to have to, we're going to have to get it right and, and get them ready to go. And then offensively, we're going to have to do a great job of controlling the game and, and scoring um, on our possessions because, again, there won't be there won't be a lot of, of possessions out there. 
I know a lot of coaches around the conference, unless you're in first place, are being asked this question. How do you balance going out there and try to win the game with looking at younger players and, and trying to keep everybody healthy for the fall season? It's a juggling act right now for a, a lot of coaches. I think you're playing, you're getting a good look at a lot of freshmen, but that's by necessity because you need the yeah. bodies out there. Um, but you, especially on the defense side of the ball, a, a lot of true freshmen have stepped up. A lot of guys are sacrificing themselves for the good of the team. How is how has that experience gone and and how much have you liked what you've seen from some of these guys who probably didn't expect to see the field this early? Yeah, no, I think with what we've done, I'm really on both sides of the ball. Um, I, you know, we got some young guys playing, like you said, on defense, especially. You know, we're a young team. We know that. We were, we were going to be young this fall if we played too. But I think the thing that we're seeing is you've got a lot of guys that are getting game experience. Even when you go back to the week, uh, this past weekend against BMI, you got some freshmen or young DBs that really haven't taken a lot of game reps. Maybe they took special teams reps. The only way you get better at playing those fade balls and, and winning your one on ones is, is by doing it in game situations. And so, again, all those reps are, are valuable. You'd like to win the game, obviously, when you, you're getting those reps, um, but it, it's something that you got to definitely balance. We're, we're getting a lot of young guys playing time. We'll continue to do that, but our goal is to win. Well, I, I know we're still in the midst of the season, and I know this wacky year has thrown football calendars off all over the place, but I do want to touch upon something that you and your coaches have done and done very well the last couple of years, your Wofford football camps for high school mm -hmm. players, uh, a great way for players to get noticed, a great way for you to look at some talent. Um, I, I know the, the the dates are out, and I know the uh, the player, the links will be out soon for players and coaches to sign up at WaffordTerriers.com. But how will camps be different this year, Coach, and, and will it affect your ability to evaluate and will it affect the ability of these kids to to see and be seen this, this summer? Well, we're hoping that, you know, we're hoping we have the ability to – to, we'll have four prospect camps on the Sundays in June, which will be really our recruiting camps, you know, where we, we get a chance to evaluate guys and, and watch them and work with them. We'll try to get a lot of the guys that we're looking at at those camps, those prospect camps. But uh, we haven't really seen anything from the NCAA that says, you know, what's going to be different or how it's going to be different. Um, I, you know, what I'm really hoping for is this June, um, we can kind of press a reset button for us as a football program and just football in general. Um, you get back into your your June cycle of camps and then you, you know get into preparing for the season. Um, the other one, too, that I want to mention is we've got, you know, we've got the youth camp, which is first grade through eighth grade. That's mm -hmm. a four day camp that we run just right after Memorial Day or uh, yeah, Memorial Day weekend. And, you know, that one we don't that's more of a it's kind of a mission for me personally, just I, to promote the game. Um, we try to make the cost so it's we're covering our insurance, covering the t-shirt, but we want as many young kids there as we can. It's a great week just to learn the basic fundamentals and techniques, but trying to promote the game um, and, and what it provides for, you know, um, young people. And, and I'm, I'm excited about that. And hopefully we can get some, some people here, some kids here. You probably got a lot of young kids who are really pent up, but they haven't been able to go to participate in things like that this spring. They may, uh, they may hit the field like a bunch of screaming banshees. You may have to have your work cut out for you. Just, just as an aside, you've been involved in these camps, obviously camps like these throughout your career. What's the youngest you've ever seen a kid that you've been like, wow, he's special. I mean, when he grows up, we're going to keep tabs on him, things like that. Is there, is there, is there a minimum age where you can really get a, a look at somebody's football acumen and football IQ? No, it's hard. I mean, it's, it's tough. I, I think you look at some of the, the bigger kids and, you know, some of them stop growing and it's kind of like anything. Sometimes your, your smaller kids are the ones that have the best eye hand coordination. So uh, they, they, they don't ever grow to be big enough, but um, <laughs> no, you can't really tell, but it's fun to, it's fun to get around them and watch them and, you know, just promote the game and, and show them the basic fundamentals and techniques. I know our staff really enjoys it and uh, it, it, it's a great, it's a great four days. Well, here's one more vote and towards life returning close to normal. And uh, you, you kind of, you kind of, when you hit that, when you said that reset button, that, that really hit home. I think we're all ready for something along those lines. Coach, we always appreciate the team. Go out there and keep fighting the good fight. Can't wait to see you guys take on Citadel this weekend. And we'll do it all again next week.
All right. Appreciate it, Jim. All right. That's Coach Josh Conklin. I'm Jim Noble. Once again, thanks to our sponsor, RJ Rockers. And we will see you next week on the Coach Josh Conklin Show.